this video we're going to be looking at pulleys. So a pulley system contains bodies connected by a string which runs through a pulley. Think log logically about the direction the masses will move. If you have no common sense you'll have a hard time with these. So that means if you don't understand that the heavier object will, it will go down on the side where the heavier object is and it will go up on the side where the lighter object is. So this example let's jump into it. And it says two bodies of mass 3 kilograms and 5 kilograms are attached by a light and extensible string which passes through a smooth fixed pulley. So let's do our diagram for a pulley. The diagram is very easy. Just do a circle representing your pulley. On either side of the pulley you do your, your strings which are going down. Um, we've got the mass. I've done the 3 kilograms going here. So that's 3 kilograms. And I've got my 5 kilograms going here. That's 5 kilograms. Now remember, they are, they are masses. So those masses will have weights of 3G Newton and 5G Newtons there. Okay. Now there's tension in this. Uh, so first of all, we have to think which way will it go. It is clearly going to go down on this side. So it's going to accelerate downwards this way. And it means it's going to accelerate upwards this way. Now, uh, what is moving this um, three kilograms up is a tension in the string. And the tension, there's also going to be a tension in the string upwards here, which is trying to slow down this uh, five kilograms mass as well. There's also going to be a tension going downwards here and the tension going downwards here. So all these tensions balance each other out, uh, but they're also... Uh, but if you can look at things direct, uh, differently and, and think about the tension, the forces acting on particular bits. So if I was just looking at the system as a whole, I'd be looking at everything in this uh, green uh, squiggle. If I was looking at just the three kilogram mass, I'm just looking at those forces. If I'm just looking at the uh, five kilogram mass, I'm looking at this. And very importantly, and this does come up every now and again, if they ask you about the tension on the, or the force on the pulley, I should say, on the pulley, there's your two forces. So it's T and T, so it's 2T is your, your force on your pulley. So you need to be able to look at the system as a whole, uh, and then look at individual bits and think of the, uh, the forces on it. Okay, Helen actually probably read this question. It says, the system is released from rest with, uh, with the bodies hanging vertically. Find the acceleration of the system, the tension of the strings, and the force exerted on the pulley when the bodies are in motion. Excellent. We've got everything covered in the one question. Okay, I'm going to say consider the system as a whole. Okay, right. Now, if you imagine I took this thing and I stretched it out, so I stretched these forces out so they were horizontal as opposed to the strings out so they're horizontal as opposed to hanging vertically, what the diagram would look like, and do not take this down, please, don't be putting this into your notes, but this is really what uh, one way that people like to see it. So you would have your 5G Newtons going this way, going against it, you'd have T, going for it, you'd have T, uh, going against it, you'd have T, going for it, you'd have T. So clearly all those T's cancel out, and then you have your 3G. And remember, this was 3 kilograms, this was 5 kilograms. So if you look at it that way, and use F equals MA, your overall force is 5G minus 3G, and your mass is 3 plus 5, which is 8, times your acceleration, and then you'd be able to work that out. Okay, so that's what we want to do without this diagram. So uh, you're thinking of just of all the forces, that 5G force is a force that's going to be getting it going. So you have to just, just start with that one and then work back. So the 5G gets you going. Going against it is T. Going for it is T. Going against it is T. Going for it is T. And you've also got the 3G. And that's equal to your total mass, which is 8 times your A. So 2G equals 8A. And remember for us... G is 20, uh, sorry, G is 10, so 2G is going to be 20, so that's 20 divided by 8 is equal to A. So 20 divided by 4 would be 5, so 20 divided by 8 would be 2.5, and that's going to be meters per second squared. Okay, I am, um, next thing we have to do is find the tension in the string. 
So I'll go down a wee bit just to give myself a wee bit more room. And I'm going to say consider uh, consider the three kilograms just. So I'm just looking at the three kilograms. So I wouldn't be marking this in your diagram, but just to help us out here for me to explain it, that's really what I'm, I'm talking about here. So again, I'm using F equals MA. So going up, I've got T is getting uh, the three kilograms moving. Going against it is 3G. That equals to my mass, which is 3 times my acceleration, which I now know is 2.5. So T is equal to 3 times 7.5, 3, 3 times 2.5, sorry, which is 7.5, plus 3 times G, which is 30. So your T works out to be 37.5 newtons. And the last thing was a force exerted on your pulley. So again, if we look just on our pulley, there's your forces on your pulley. So just say your force on your pulley is 2t, which is just going to be equal to 2 times 37.5, which is going to be 75 newtons. So get your acceleration, your tension, and your force in your pulley. That's that question up. Okay, last example for this question. It says two packages, A and B, of mass 5 kilograms and M kilograms respectively, where M is less than 5, so that means 5 is the heavier for the two uh, packages, are connected by a light inextensible string which passes over a smooth pulley uh, fixed to a ceiling of a store. And then the question says the packages are held so that both parts of the string are hanging vertically with the string taut. So taut, T-A-U-T, this word here, uh, this word here, sorry, means just the string is pulled tight. So there's no, it's not slack, it's pulled tight. There is tension, tension in the string. The system is released from rest and, uh, and the magnitude of the acceleration of each package is 2.5 meters per second. Find the tension in the string. Okay, right, we can, um, Mark on your A is asking me 5G going downwards. That's going to be, we don't know what it is, but it's MG going downwards. There's going to be a tension going up here. There's going to be a tension going up here. There's also going to be a tension going down here and a tension going down here. And remember your five is uh, the bigger of the two. So it's going to, if it's going to accelerate, it's going to go downwards here. And we know the magnitude of the acceleration is 2.5 and the acceleration upwards is also equal to 2.5 and really I should have had my units and those so we'll add those in 2.5 meters per second squared. Okay, uh, it says to find the tension in the string so uh, we have to have we look at this I will zoom out a wee bit so we can see this Okay, I will put my solutions over here just. Uh, so in this one, for part one, tension the string, I'm going to just look at A. So I'm just looking at A. So I'm going to zoom in on what I am talking about here. So just this bit. So that's what I'm talking about here. So for your A, we're going downwards. Resolve downwards, and I'm going to use F equals MA and my force downwards is 5G going against it is T and that's my 5 times my acceleration which is 2.5 so that's going to be 5G is 50 minus 5 times 2.5 is going to be 5 times 2.5 is going to be 12.5 is equal to T so your T is equal to uh, 50 minus 12.5 which is going to be 37.5 newtons. Okay, now on to part two. Part two says find the value of m. So to find m, um, lots of different ways we could do this. We could have considered the whole system. Uh, yep, we could have considered the whole system. I thought what I've done in my notes, just to show you a different way, I have looked at b just. So I've just looked at b alone. So when I'm looking at b, I'm just looking at these forces on b, and we're going to resolve vertically upwards and I'm going to use F equals MA. So T is going upwards. We know that T is 37.5. I'm 
and uh, my mg is going down so it's mg is equal to my mass which is m times my acceleration which is 2.5 so a very nice wee question this one 35 is equal to so we've got 2.5 times m plus uh, g times m which is 10 10 m so 10 m plus 2.5 m is 12.5 m i'm going to show you a bit of working out for that one we had our 2.5 m plus 10 m so apologies for my terrible handwriting here that's 37.5 is equal to 12.5 m and then all we want to do is do your 37.5 divided by 12.5 is equal to m so m works out to be 3 kilograms okay uh, on to part 3 it says when the packages have been in motion for 1.5 seconds a strikes the platform below so the a hits uh, the platform um, the string becomes slack and B initially continues to rise. Assuming that B does not reach the pulley, calculate and then part 3 says the speed of the packages at the moment A strikes a platform. So we'll not worry too much about the rest of the question here. All we want to, uh, to worry about in this part of the question is the fact that uh, we're looking for just the speed of the package. So the, it started at rest. We're looking talking about A. It started at rest and it was the acceleration sorry it was 2.5 it hits the platform 1.5 seconds later and what we want to find is a speed at which it hits the platform so using v is equal to u plus a t so v is equal to 0 plus uh, 2.5 times 1.5 so V works out to be, and it's going to be 3.75 meters per second. Okay. And part four says, find the additional distance through which B rises after A strikes the platform. Okay. After A strikes the platform, I'm just going to do a diagram here. So this is a very rough diagram. But you can imagine there's A has just smacked on to the platform. It's just hit the platform. And there's your pulley. Your string is now slack. So if the string is now slack, that means that, uh, that means that there is no tension in the string. So the only thing that is affecting B is the acceleration due to gravity. And it's just basically it's acting on the, uh, the gravity 10 meters per second squared is acting towards uh, the ground. So it's moving upwards, but with a negative acceleration minus uh, 10 meters per second squared. So I will just pause the video, I'll write that in uh, neatly, and then put that back for you. Okay, so I've just said when A hits the ground, the string becomes slack, so B moves under gravity. So there's no tension, nothing else involved, it's just moving freely under gravity. So for B, let's just look at B. Uh, its initial velocity is the same as the speed at which A hit the ground, so it's going to be uh, 3.75, and we'll just put the arrow upwards. Uh, its uh, final velocity is going to be zero, so it's at its maximum height, and your ex its acceleration is minus 10. Again, all of those are upwards. And what we want to do is find that additional height it goes. So S is what we're looking for. So we're going to use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. Okay, so just scroll down a wee bit. And we're using V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And your U squared, I'm just going to write it in as 3.75 squared. And then 2A is going to be minus 20s, so that's 20s is equal to 3.75 squared. S works out to be 3.75 squared divided by 20, and I'm just going to work out what that is now. So I punched, the, so I punched that into the calculator and I got 45 over 60. So S uh, to a couple of decimal places is going to be 0.70 meters.
Okay. Right. The last part of this question says, find the time which elapses between A striking a platform uh, and the string becoming taut again. Now, for this last bit, we're squeezing this on again. Uh, for this very last bit, uh, the string becomes taut again once uh, B has returned to the height at which it was whenever the string first went sla uh, slack. So I'm going to pause the video and write that in. Okay, so just type that in. The string becomes taut when B returns to the height it was when the string first went slack. So, a couple of things that means. That means, first of all, uh, your initial velocity of your string going up was 3.75 going upwards. My speed of the string then, when it uh, when it gets back to the same position, is going to be 3.75, but it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be 3.75 going downwards, or minus 3.75 upwards. My acceleration is still minus 10, and what we want to find is the time which has elapsed. So again, we're using v is equal to u plus at, fill in what you now know. So minus 3.75 is equal to 3.75 uh, minus 10t. So that means 10t is equal to 3.75 plus 3.75, which is going to be uh, 3 plus 3 is 6, 7.5 7 .5 plus 7.5 is going to be 1.5. So 6 plus 1.5 is going to be 7.5. So t is equal to 7.5 divided by 10. So t is going to work out to be 3 quarters or 0.75 seconds. And that's it. Done.